I'm speaking about presenting code, and let's go. So this lightning talk has been inspired um, by the keynote from Scott Myers, which he did at Mini C++ 2014, which was about preparing material for the modern age and um, also kind of, you know, seeing lots of talks being given in, at various conferences in various settings. So um, let's talk a bit about like, you know, how to present code, how to uh, think about things. Um, but first, you know, I, I want to point out like, where's your audience today? And this has been true, like prior to the pandemic that a lot of your audience will be in the recording. Um, and have in mind that the slides are recorded separately. Um, but also, of course, pay attention, as Andre just said, um, to the audience in the room, even if a lot of people will just be sitting there and reading email, doing social media, following your talk along, but the other half will listen and be, you know, uh, engaging with you for questions. And that's if, if you're presenting on site, this audience will be the source of the questions about your talk, right? So you better be engaging to them. Um, but actually, I'm talking about presenting code. So um, there are various forms of how you can put code on slides. Um, text is probably one of the best. Um, screenshots, some people do a live demo, so you're just streaming your editor. And also, like the, the common programs used for slides are not like coming with a slide for code. There's no template for it. You can just, there's various ways to do it. And um, I would like to just go quickly through them. Um, first, please remember that fonts matter. Um, they bring readability and for code, make sure it's a monospace font. And of course, also as your slides will go through a projection and some encoding uh, things nowadays, probably uh, the code for your font should not be too thin. Um, highlighting less is, in my opinion, better. And some people do like, bold keywords and other people do other things that say, like, you know, express yourself there, feel feel comfortable with that. That's important. Um, also colors. Um, your slides should have a good contrast, uh, stick with one theme, dark or light theme, for example, uh, should not be too colorful. Um, and of course, please be aware about color blindness. Avoid, for example, red green text is one of the easiest things but also be aware that if your contrast uh, is getting bad, then like uh, the, one of the classics is like having blue text on black background or gray background that can be in the, in the lighting on, on the, the stage where you present suddenly be a lot less readable than it was at your screen where you wrote the slides. And all, all of that also applies to code highlighting, right? Um, Here's an example which I used a couple of years ago where I just put the code into um, how it was and um, I skipped the things which were not important with ellipses, but didn't like cut out everything which makes us, uh, you know, kind of showing the code which, which is important. And then when I talk about something in my talk, I highlight the part of the code which I'm talking about so people know actually what I'm doing on stage. And uh, that way I don't need to finger around with a laser pointer. Another very nice way I have seen is by Michael Cass um, at CPPCon. He did a way that basically most of the code is grayed out. And when he continues in his talk, more and more code, the code he's just talking about is just the next thing coming up and then he's like, this is now, now what we're implementing and talks about that. Works very well and works fantastically in this presentation and you already can kind of see what's next and you can also like see what's in the past, uh, what you know has been added to the slide prior. Um, very nice way to do this. And 
also um, be aware and be not afraid to ask to change the lightning if the lightning ruins, uh, ruins your slides. Uh, please check for that always. Um, and you see here that there's basically uh, the code and then there's like comments which they or things they want to say about their code and put into little uh, speaking boxes. That's also very nice to do um, just to, to give people a hint what you're talking about. And that's, that's, that's also a great animation. Um, but of course, you know, that's like also the question like, what do you do when people have a question which is about something which is not highlighted or you want to highlight something which you didn't think about? Um, there are, for example, ways to draw on a slide. Um, but also um, there are virtual laser pointers and laser pointers is, I think, the next thing I'm going to talk about. Um, laser pointers are often used. I've seen them. Um, there are some problems with them. For starters, um, did you see the laser pointer? That's that's my my op which which I often observe when I sit in a talk and people highlight things with laser pointers. I get confused. Okay, and of course, most importantly, it's like one point I I didn't add a slide for that, but. Please, we're online now. We're talking online. This is a new default. Think about that part of your online audience will never see laser pointer, even if like the slide is being streamed via via the camera, which hopefully it is not. Um, also, what do you do with a double projection? As CPPCon loves double projections, and then you know you you come to a meeting C plus plus, and in the big room we had this setup, right? So you're, you're never going to be able to, to or maybe you're running in the back and showing the, those people too with the laser pointer. So there's alternatives. There's uh, various methods to have a virtual laser pointer. Um, and there's various methods to do this on screen. Um, but uh, it's best to prior highlight the things you want to talk about. Um, so conclusions, laser pointers are hard to see, but also they're not recorded. And that is then missing a lot of the audience, which will see your talk. Actually, most of the audience, like 10% of your audience is in the room at best. Um, and look into virtual laser pointers. Know your tool if you want to write or draw on, on slides. Uh, highlight what you're talking about. Um, and with code, there is something called slide plus plus. You don't have to show code which is like a hundred percent compilable and has all the keywords that is needed to be in production. Uh, focus on uh, the code that is important for your example for your slide. Um, live demos can be great, but need to be prepared, which we'll see soon. And of course, if you want to watch the keynote, that's online too. And